So in this video I'm going to show you how to build a double bi-quad for 5.8 GHz FPV. Now somebody asked me about uh, a double bi-quad for uh, 5.8 GHz and I was under the impression that I'd already done a video on uh, constructing a wire version of uh, a double bi-quad for uh, 5.8 GHz but uh, when I actually went back and had a look I've only done the 5 GHz which is uh, for Wi-Fi. So uh, I decided to uh, produce a double bi-quad using uh, PCB materials like I did in the uh, Yagi bi-quad video. Now one of the hurdles you have to overcome when uh, you want to use PCB material to produce a double bi-quad is uh, the fact that uh, the elements here and here where they crisscross they cannot touch. Now if you were building this out of wire it would be easy to uh, sort that problem out because you could put some heat shrink tubing round uh, one section just so they don't short out to each other. Now one thing I thought about doing uh, first is to actually use a double sided board and uh, etching this uh, element here if you like on the underside and drilling down some vias to uh, actually connect the uh, two together so you get that nice crisscross pattern of a bi-quad. But that uh, would be extremely expensive to etch away, um, you know, probably about 98% of the uh, copper plate on the underside of this board just to get one uh, small strip of copper. So uh, I actually, the first idea I came up with was to actually use wire and drill two small holes and uh, having it uh, bent over some dielectric. But um, after building it, I didn't uh, quite like it. It works and that's a... Uh, good method to actually use if you want to use that method but uh, it just looked a little bit messy to me. So halfway through the video I uh, show you the uh, new method that I'm using to actually produce some for myself and uh, for the shop when it comes online hopefully soon and um, this uh, second method that I use produces a much nicer more professional looking antenna and also it protects the elements because the elements now are on the underside of that PCB. So I have left the uh, first method in the video and uh, then I'll show you, quickly show you the second method halfway through the video and I've left that in there because normally it takes about three weeks for me to shoot a video like this, uh, two weeks if I'm not too busy at work and um, you know either method works well you'll still uh, produce a fully working 5.8 GHz uh, double back quad antenna but um, I think the second method it just looks a little bit nicer. So let's get the tools out and go through the measurements and I'll show you how I uh, came up with uh, this design. So once you've got your element etched out you're going to need to gather up some other materials and uh, I've got some uh, lengths of dowel here, they're actually 9mm long and uh, 5mm in diameter. I've got some semi-rigid coax here that I've soldered onto one of these uh, right angle connectors and uh, I've got a piece of uh, copper board here just a single layer copper board and this is actually 80 millimeters by 40 millimeters and uh, I'll probably round the edges off on this as well just slightly just so it's not so sharp and it looks a little bit nicer. Now something else that you're going to need for this build is some of this uh, cheap ass 50 ohms coax it's the type of coax that you would connect to your TV antenna or your satellite dish and uh, you're going to want to try and find some that has a solid core and uh, a dielectric similar to this because they're the two pieces of the uh, uh, coax here that we're actually going to use in this build so we're going to be cutting this away using a small amount of the dielectric and uh, some small lengths of the uh, inner copper wire so you're going to have to uh, try and find something similar to this so first thing I'm going to do with this board is I'm going to flow solder all over the uh, copper lines here now the reason I do that is because I'm going to have to solder here and here to actually join these two elements together and uh, I just find that if I flow solder all over the board it gets a nice uniform finish and it looks that little bit nicer as well. So I'm using a nice wide chisel tip here and I'm going to do one length at a time so just keep dragging that solder so it adheres to the copper and get a nice smooth finish. So now I'm going to go ahead and drill the holes that I need. So I'm going to drill a 5mm hole here and here 
and I'm also going to drill the holes for the coax where the coax uh, connects to this element and I'm also going to drill holes at the ends of uh, these elements here and here so I can actually bridge them across there like so and it's the same millimeter diameter that I use for the uh, coax holes here so now that I've got all the holes drilled I'm going to start working on the bridging connectors for here and here and on the other side as well and uh, I've got some of that cheap coax I told you about at the beginning and I've stripped back some of the uh, dielectric got rid of the outer braid to uh, expose a length of copper wire and uh, I've got some of the dielectric here and what I'm going to actually do with this is I want to cut it in half down its center and to make that a little bit easier I'm just squish it down a little bit so I kind of flatten it out on each end and then I go and get a um, sharp knife like this one and just cut straight down the center so after cutting the dielectric in half I've now cut off two small sections just a little bit wider than the actual uh, trace on this element because uh, what we're going to do is uh, wrap this uh, copper wire over the top of that dielectric and solder it in place and this dielectric will keep this separate from the track underneath so I'm going to actually add a little bit of uh, super glue just to hold it in place temporary while we uh, actually solder because this can be a little bit fiddly so I'm now going to thread this copper wire over the top of that dielectric coming from underneath the PCB here and bend it round so we can thread it back through the other hole. So I'm just going to apply a first bit of solder to that wire and then what I'm going to do is try and build it up a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is get some solder braid again and remove the excess from each side of this. So I've cleaned up the soldering and that's what it looks like, a little humpback bridge going over that uh, bottom trace there. So I've put the uh, element to one side now and I'm working on the reflector itself and what I've actually done here is use the element to mark out the two support holes here for the uh, actual spaces for the element and I've just drawn across from the diagonals in each corner for the centre and I'm just going to drill a 3mm hole through the centre so I can uh, attach the coax to the uh, element and also solder that semi-rigid coax directly to the reflector itself and of course these two are 5mm uh, holes just like uh, the uh, diameter on the element there so now that I've got the holes cut in my back reflector, what I'm going to do next is use a little bit of super glue and mount my little spacing dowels into the uh, reflector first before I do anything else. And uh, the gap between the reflector and the driven element at the front wants to be 6.5 millimeters. So I've just cleaned up the board and I'm getting ready to solder the coax onto the uh, reflector here and uh, we're going to need a little bit of uh, the copper wire from that cheap coax that we used at the beginning of this build just to solder onto uh, the side of uh, the outer braid of this coax so we can go through the hole and we can attach that to our uh, driven element so I've got the coax going through the back reflector here and what I'm going to do is flood solder all around here to attach it properly and you can probably just see that little length of copper wire just sticking out there so when I flood with solder around here it will also hold that in place and ground ground it down to the uh, outer braid of the uh, coax itself so I've glued the driven element in place onto its wooden standoffs there and uh, what I'm going to do now is just solder the two connections in place and then I'll clean it up and give it some paint and uh, it's finished so I just wanted to quickly show you a different method that I've since come up with that uh, makes a lot uh, more of a neater job of constructing this double bi quad using a single layer PCB. Now I've got uh, quite a lot of uh, scrap circuit board lying around like this 
and uh, what I've done I've got a heat gun on it and I've gently peeled away the copper from the fiberglass board and what I've done I've cut it into uh, strips uh, the same size as the uh, tracks on the uh, bi-quad PCB here and I've pre-tinned it up as well and I'm still using the dielectric there as a little hump in the road if you like and uh, what I've decided to do is use this to uh, wrap around there and solder on both sides and it makes a lot more of a uh, neat job than uh, actually drilling holes in the copper wire over the top of that dielectric and the method that I've just shown you I think, I think it does uh, a much neater job I'm quite impressed with that so as you can see there with the dielectric removed it does a really good job of bridging that gap it's uh, much neater than using wire so if you decide to construct this antenna with the uh, actual elements on the inside so they're actually protected from the outside I thought I'd show you uh, my technique for actually soldering upside down now the uh, element here I've um, got the uh, two solder points and I've already pre-tinned them with quite a uh, lump of solder on each there and then what I did I flipped it upside down and then I re-drilled the holes out again and uh, I did it very carefully don't put too much uh, force on there just try and let the drill do the work because uh, you can actually end up pushing the tracks away from the uh, board so do that nice and carefully and secondly the uh, the coax here that what I'm going to be soldering onto I've got it quite long so uh, I've got quite a bit sticking up from uh, the uh, top side of the element itself and I've uh, put two big lumps of solder on each leg because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be holding it upside down and I'm going to be using my soldering iron on each one of these tips and just letting the heat go down the copper wire melt that solder and then gravity will uh, force that uh, solder down and it will uh, mate with those two solder points there so they're both soldered in place now and another thing you can do once you've got some heat on there is just give it a uh, little tap from underneath and get that solder to uh, actually flow down and uh, meld with the uh, solder point so whichever method you use you will still uh, produce a fully working 5.8 gigahertz bi-quad it's just that the second method it looks uh, a little bit tidier and more professional and also the semi-rigid coax here you don't have to use that if you uh, don't want to it just uh, produces an antenna that's uh, it can be mounted you don't need uh, anything else to support it so uh, you know you can plug that straight in and it'll uh, hold its own weight no problem so any comments or questions then please uh, put them below and uh, if you enjoy this video and uh, you got some educational value out of it then please uh, as always give it a thumbs up because it does help here on YouTube and one thing I uh, wanted to mention that I didn't mention in uh, the previous video is I am uh, in the middle of trying to get a online shop up and going but uh, I will always show you how to uh, produce your own antenna you know even the ones that I'm going to be selling I will always show you how to make it first so I won't really sell anything unless I've shown you how to build it yourself because uh, you know it's open source and I love sharing knowledge and knowledge should be free but uh, I do understand a lot of you would rather just purchase one of these antennas instead of making it yourself and you know that's fine so as I said hopefully you uh, enjoyed this video and hopefully you'll join me on the next one